Hi, I'm Jay. And I'm John. And we're Bucket List Travellers. And today we're taking you on a walking tour down Calle Calzada in Granada, Nicaragua. So let's go. To begin with, we're in Parque Central or the Central Park of Granada. It's a really lovely park here. Plenty of shade, uh, which is really handy in the harsh summers. And I like how they've got like the topiary, they've kind of cut the trees to look really nice. If you go up to the bell tower of the Cathedral of Granada, looking back down at this park is just a really nice view. Hmm. And this time of year is around Christmas, so you'll see on the left a bunch of big decorations or installations that are there for Christmas, and we're just going to walk past the Feliz Navidad sign. Which means Merry Christmas. Yeah. We've noticed that every day throughout December, from, from what was it, mid-December, they had more and more decorations coming out, so they just slowly added to them, which was nice to see how it kind of progressed over time. Yeah. We're walking onto Calle Calzada now. Yeah, and you can see like there's a few people in Fluoro here. They seem to be parking attendants. So the main part of Calle Calzada is more of a pedestrian walkway, although cars do go down it from time to time. But this area is mainly for parking. So you can see that guy ahead on the right in yellow. I think he's a parking inspector or a parking attendant. Yeah, and there's a little bit of a road here, a thoroughfare that'll go off to the left. But once we're on the other side, then it's completely a pedestrian street. Yeah, so you don't have to battle against vehicles, only against people that are trying to get your business into their restaurants. Mm. So this is the main Eat Street of Granada. There's a lot of restaurants and bars as well as other little shops. And it's a great place to come. Wonderful atmosphere. Uh, and it gets really busy on weekends generally. You get a lot of locals or like Nicaraguans coming from other towns to have a bit of a holiday on the weekend. They'll come into Granada as well as foreigners, but not so much now because of COVID. Yeah, and so as I was saying earlier, this is around Christmas time and this is the busiest we've seen it. It has been pretty dead the last few months from what we, we could tell whenever we've been down here. There haven't been too many people at all. Uh, but this is filmed actually on Christmas Day 2020. So there's a lot of people that have flocked to Granada to get the colonial vibe of the city. Got a nice balloon maker that we just passed there. And yeah, it's, it's a very popular place to come. Yeah. The food's good here. However, it is towards the most expensive that you'll find in Granada. And that's because Calle Calzada has a tax on the food. And in addition to that, there's also the expectation of uh, service charges, which are often included in the bill as they are. And the typical service charge is 10% here. So that will be a bit more expensive than other restaurants that aren't on this street. So this area does cater to the expat community as well and to tourists. And the place really comes alive at night. So you can see above us, you've got all these fairy lights. So at night, they all get lit up and the place looks so pretty. There's often street performers. We've seen like flame, flame throwing or flame juggling. Fire breathing. Fire breathing street performers and people in uh, painted up in intricate costumes and that sort of thing. So. Yeah, it's, it's a really fun place to come.
And we're coming to the end of the pedestrian street section. So you'll see, oh, there's a, uh, here, there's a tuk-tuk or a what, auto rickshaw. The restaurants and hotels continue down this way, but you just got to be a little bit more careful because uh, cars can travel down this section. And even horse and carriages. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, so this is the street that you come down in order to get to the lake. So a lot of horse and carriages will be taking tourists down down to see the lake from here. Yeah, it's a very scenic route. Mm. Uh, lots of colourful houses, as you can see on the sides. Yeah, so that restaurant there is Panda Vida, which is a bakery. They do pizzas. They've often got specials. I think they're mainly open in the weekend or in the late afternoon and night. Uh, but yeah, they're pretty good. They've got a nice backyard or garden area out the back, which you can eat or you can take away. Yeah. And that's one of the things I love about uh, the houses in Granada. So you can't really tell from the outside how big the houses are, but you, once you walk through, uh, the houses open up into this big garden uh, with either a pool or, if it's the case of a restaurant, this really lovely courtyard. It's, it's really pretty. Mm. And it provides some respite from the heat. Like, I think I feel like the architecture, the way they've done it with those interior courtyards, seems to make the inside of the houses a lot cooler than just out on the street. Yeah. Every once in a while I'll go out for a walk in the middle of the day and with the pavement and the sun reflecting from the buildings, it's it gets really hot. So if you're coming out for a walk, it's best to do it in the early morning or in the late, late afternoon. Yeah. yeah. And you'll find that there's more activity at those times as well. Mm. Not, not so much in the middle of the day. One thing I love is that people come outside their houses in the afternoons and just sit out there. So we've got here Rapido and Furioso, which is another popular place to go, a restaurant. So we've been there for lunch before. Really nice food. That's an example of one of the places you go inside and it's this really lovely tropical sort of uh, courtyard. It's, it's really pleasant to be in. Yeah, with little cats <laughs> around and stuff as well. It's a really nice environment. Yeah. So you will find a lot of hotels uh, along this street and it's, it's, it's a very convenient place to stay. Uh, to stay because you're right next to the East Street and you're, you're only a couple of minutes walk down to the lake. This restaurant on the left here, I think that used to be a hog's breath, but it's just changed to a different restaurant now. I think it it's an Irish bar or Irish something pub, like that. Yeah. So this, this building on the left of us, or the, this church, is Cathedral Guadalupe. Mm -hmm. And it's, is it the oldest church in... I think it's the second oldest. Second oldest. So it was built in the 1600s. And I think originally as a convent, oh no, a, a monastery. And it was also, in the 1800s, it was used as a fort for William Walker. So the, the American who tried to take over the, uh, Nicaragua. So he was the president at one point, the self-declared president. Yeah. And he used this as like his last bastion. So was he holed up here for like 18 days or something like that? Yeah. Off to the right, we have Hotel Granada, another big hotel and an institution of Granada and so we're at the end of Calle Calzada now and it's turning into Paseo de los Mangos so the I think it's the passage of the mangoes a lot of streets here they'll start off as one street and then they'll change name halfway through we've noticed uh, so there's, I think this is a Red Cross building off to the left here. 
we've got a fruit vendor you can get some freshly squeezed juices and other various bits and pieces Hot dog stands are quite popular around here. We just passed one there. Hmm. I think we've actually tried that, that Mexican stand. So that was Horache. Ah, okay, yeah, sometimes it's located in a different place near a petrol station yeah, on yeah. Highway 4. And we're coming up to the sporting ovals on your left. So baseball is the national sport of Nicaragua. So every weekend you'll see people out in the fields playing baseball. And it was introduced, uh, not surprisingly, by Americans in the late 1800s. So Granada has its own baseball team, which are the Tiburones or the Sharks in English. And I've actually gone and watched them train, which was pretty cool. There used to be a professional Granada baseball team, which was in the professional league, and they were called the Orientales. But currently there are just five teams in the professional league, which are the Managua, Leon, Rivas, Chinandega, and Esteli teams. I think football is becoming more popular now. Uh, it, Football has less equipment, so that that's definitely one of its appeals. But baseball, there's baseball diamonds in pretty much every town around Nicaragua. Yeah, on our left here, we've got an area that's, uh, it's basically the, the vendors for fireworks. So fireworks are really popular around Christmas. Every everyone on every street will have fireworks to light off around Christmas Eve and also New Year's Eve. And, and this is the place in Granada you go to get them. Yeah, and also around the major festivities, including we, we just had La Parisma, which is a festivity leading up to Christmas, which celebrates the Virgin Mary. So yeah, there were plenty of fireworks then. And New Year's Eve, is another big day for fireworks. A lot of major parades will come down this street and finish off at the lake. So Ipica, which is a horse festival or equestrian festival uh, that's very popular in Granada, that came down this street. We were here to see that and it was such a spectacle. It was great. There were floats that everyone was dressed up in their finest. The horses were fantastic. It, the equestrian culture here is very strong. Yeah, there's a very big horse culture in Nicaragua. Also around the time of Ipica and the Top de Torres, which is the running of the bulls, there's bull riding down uh, at the lake here. And we, we haven't seen that, but I'm sure that would be quite a spectacle as well. So we're getting closer to Lake Nicaragua. It is the largest lake in Central America. Yeah, so it's a freshwater lake and it's actually the 19th biggest lake in the world. Oh, really? Mmm. Jeez, that's 19, 18 lakes bigger. Wow. And as you can see, this is a really beautiful area. Uh, on our right here, they've curated this park to, to look really nice. And we're very close to the Malacon, the Granada or the, the Granada Pier. It's really pretty. You can come and sit down here and there's a few benches and get some respite from the heat, take a bit of a rest, just enjoy the atmosphere, enjoy the beautiful weather. Yeah, it's really a beautiful day to be out and about, that's for sure. Yeah, so you can see off to the right, there's a statue with a someone's face. So that is the statue of Ruben Dario. So we'll just walk up to it now. Ruben Dario was Nicaragua's most famous poet. He lived in the, the mid to late 1800s and he drove the modern modernism movement in Spanish American poetry. So Ruben Dario had a very fascinating life. He started reading from around the age of three and by 13, he was writing poetry for publications. 
He traveled the world and worked as a diplomat for the Nicaraguan government, as well as one of the most prolific or famous poets in Nicaragua or in Latin America. I think he was one of the most famous in just the Spanish language. He's revered all around the country. This statue on our right here is of Francisco Hernandez of Córdoba. He's known as the founding father of Nicaragua. He was the guy who founded Granada and he also founded the city of León. In his honour, the currency of Nicaragua are Córdobas. I really like that love statue thing. It's, it's very pretty. It's very colourful, nice, isn't it? Nice sentiment. And here we are at the Malacon. That's the boardwalk area overlooking the water at Lake Nicaragua. You've got the pier to the left of us. And then if you continue over to the right, you've got the Centro Turistico. It's a really nice area to have a picnic, get a smoothie, and you can also catch boat rides to the Las Isletas. If you like this video, then hit that like button and please leave us a comment. And don't forget to subscribe. We are Bucket List Travellers. See you next time.